Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson six, as you can see, pulmonary versus systemic circuits of blood. So I've mentioned pulmonary quite a lot in the last lecture, and I talked about how that meant heart and lungs. So that's kind of self-explanatory, but I'll explain it anyway, don't worry. Uh, we also have the systemic circuit, and uh, you might be able to deduce what it is from that, but we will talk about it as well. Essentially, there are two circuits of blood in your body, and they both flow through the heart. Let's imagine here. Now, this is obviously very, very simplified, but let's start with the heart. The, ox the blood flows into the uh, right atrium, the right ventricle, and then through the pulmonary arteries. So that is this pulmonary artery here. It goes to the lungs and then comes back through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium. This circuit that goes from the ventricle, the right ventricle to the left atrium is the pulmonary circuit. So the blood flows um, from the heart and back in this circuit and then it will be pumped into the left ventricle through the aorta and to the rest of the body. This is the systemic circuit. It then goes back through the into the vena cava, either superior or inferior, emptying into the right atrium. So that is the systemic circuit. Um, it is essentially, uh, what, what this represents, the red part represents oxygenated blood and the blue part represents deoxygenated blood. But that is not the cutoff for the circuits. That is the heart. So heart to lungs is the pulmonary circuit, heart to the rest of the body is the systemic circuit, kind of starts at the ventricles and ends at the atria. So the pulmonary circuit. The pulmonary circuit sends blood from the heart to the lungs and back. Why do we need to send blood to the lungs? That is a very good question. It is to oxygenate the blood. We breathe oxygen into our lungs and it goes into our bloodstream, so our heart pumps blood to our lungs so it can collect that. It is the right side of the heart, essentially. The, it is the smaller portion of the right ventricle uh, that pumps it, and then it goes into the left atrium, which is the larger side. It doesn't have to pump as hard. That's why the uh, right ventricle is smaller and is the smaller of the two sides. Uh, it doesn't have to pump all the way to the rest of the body, just to the lungs and get it back. So it's not as far. Blood enters the right atria from the rest of the body through the superior and inferior vena cava, enters the right ventricle, and then it is pumped to the lungs uh, in the, through the pulmonary arteries. The blood returns to the left atria through the pulmonary veins so it can be sent to the rest of the body. So the oxygenation is the pulmonary circuit. The systemic circuit, as I mentioned, sends blood all around our body and then back to the heart. But as blood is pumped from the left side or the left ventricle, in the heart, and this circuit uh, has a very long way to be pushed. It is the larger side, it is the stronger side. Therefore, it is the larger of two halves of the heart. The left ventricle is larger because it needs to push all the way to the rest of the body. The right ventricle is small because it only needs to go to the lungs and it's actually very close to the heart. Blood received from the lungs is sent all around our body in the systemic circuit. It travels through the left atria, the left ventricle, and moves through the aorta to be sent to the rest of our organs and tissues. The systemic system eventually brings blood back to the heart to start the journey over and go through the pulmonary circuit, then through the systemic circuit. Pulmonary circuit to pick up blood, systemic circuit to deliver it to the rest of the body. Pulmonary circuit to pick it up, you get the idea. So we have again the picture. Um, this top part, from the heart to the lungs and back, is the pulmonary circuit. From the heart to the rest of the body and back is the systemic circuit. The pulmonary circuit essentially starts in the right ventricle. The right ventricle, as you can even see from this picture, is smaller than the left ventricle because it only needs to go to the lungs and back, while the left ventricle pumps blood all the way throughout the body and back to the heart. This only works, uh, these circuits only exist in closed circulation systems like humans or like dogs or like cats where there are blood vessels and they blood vessels travel throughout the entire body. So not every animal or uh, insect 
uh, has a closed circulation. Not every animal is uh, as able to be as efficient with their oxygen intake as we are. So in frogs and some other animals and insects, they have an open circulatory system with no blood vessels. Essentially what happens is their organs bathe in blood instead of having uh, blood delivered to them. Um, they often breathe through their skin, um, not through like, like any lung um, kind of organs. So the oxygen just goes into the blood and then is mixed all around. They still have a heart, which mixes the blood up, but it is um, definitely not as efficient as our system. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to research a little bit about that. I'd like you to find out some about open systems and how they work, which animals and organisms have them. And we already know a lot about closed systems. That's ours and dogs and cats and most, most animals that we know. So there's the website. It's also in your booklet. Uh, thanks very much for watching everyone here. If you have any questions, let me know and I will see you soon.